Hey everyone, Tim again, Tim's Computer Repair. Going to do a little build here with a new processor at the time of this video, the Ryzen 9 9950X 3D processor. And we got us a MSI GeForce Ventus 3X 5080 video card. We're just going to do a quick little build with this, see how it comes together, throw down on a little bit of processor benchmarks. I'm not really going to get a whole lot into comparing benchmarks and what have you. I'm just looking at performance, a quick build to see how this goes. Take you guys along for the ride, see how it turns out. Let's get a little closer look at the parts that I'm going to be using. Okay, look, let's just take a really quick look at exactly what we're building with here. This is all centered around the new chip, new at the time of this video, the Ryzen 9. 9950X 3D processor. We're going to be putting this chip into this motherboard, the ASUS Tough Gaming X870 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard. To round it all out, we're just going to throw down with the Ventus 3X, it's the MSI card, the GeForce RTX 5080. We're going to be cooling everything down with the Kraken Elite 360. Nice little cooler there. Our memory is going to be select brand Corsair, 64 gigs. That's two times 32 gig sticks, 6,000 megahertz is what we're going with. And we have a little bit of RGB there to round that out. We are going to go with a two terabyte Western Digital Black. This is a PCI Express 5 NVMe. So it's a Gen 5 with 14,900 megabytes of speed read speed nice that'll be nice might do some testing on that I don't know. and then for a little bit of a scratch disc we're going with a gen 4 4 terabyte m.2 nvme and to power everything with it we're going for the thermal take tough power 1050 watt tough power gfa3 fully modular 10 year warranty Smart Zero fans, got the ATX 3.1 so we don't burn our connector on our card. Hopefully that will not happen. Main Japanese capacitors, PCI Express Gen 5.1 compatible. It's ready. So those are the components that we'll be using. I'm going to start off with just testing uh, to be sure that the motherboard and processor is okay. Out of the box as usual. Let's get that going and see, make sure everything has arrived, not DOA, good gosh, I hope not. So as you can see here, this motherboard here has one 2.0 USB port here. And this is one of my biggest things that bug me about these new 870 boards, is that there's so many of them that are coming with like four of these USB 2.0 ports by eliminating all of those crazy USB 2.0 ports, it gives us more room for these higher end USB ports here. And also, you know, we could also throw in more type C ports like we have here. This motherboard has two 40 gigabit USB type C ports. It also has three of these 10 gigabit USB ports here on these turquoise color. A lot of times the colors on these would be red on other motherboards. I don't know why it's that color on this one, but oh well. And it also has four USB 3 ports here, which is great. Um, I like the new design of the Wi-Fi connectors. They're sort of like a snap-on instead of a, a screw-on type thing. We'll look at that a little later. And uh, all these little jacks here that would accommodate for any type of sound system that you may want to set up with this board. 1.1, 2.5 gigahertz ethernet port, which is okay. There are some that offer two or five gig. I'm okay with this. Uh, that's one of the selling points that I got this board for was the way they have this uh, IO, this IO here in the back configured. I like it. So another thing I like really quick is the fact that this takes on five M.2 slots, two of these supporting Gen 5. That's right, two of them support Gen 5, which is pretty nice. Of course, now they only have 
minus the main PCI Express 5 slot. They have a one more down here and there's only one. And that just makes room for all of the, uh, or giving us the extra M.2 NVMe slots here. So, you know, I don't, I mean, who needs more than two of these, uh, you know, PCI Express 5 slots here. So, SLI and whatever, that's a thing of the past. Nobody's doing that anymore. So, uh, I don't see the need for having any more than this. I mean, even though you, you can maybe... You know, any kind of other uh, sound card or any other capture card or something you might be able to use in one of these other slots, but that's really all you need. You've got one, you've got down here, you've got one, two, three, four, then you have five, six, then over here you've got seven. These are all fan headers, so... That gives you plenty of fan headers for the fans on your board. Of course, you've got your, your uh, Type-C front panel port here as usual, your USB 3.0 port there. And you also have, of course, your SAT, couple of SATA hookups here. Uh, but that's all they give you are a couple of these. So, you know, this is definitely built and geared more towards having uh, M.2s. And that's where... That's where things are moving when you're only giving you two of these SATA uh, ports here for any uh, SATA drives that you might have to put in your computer. Things are definitely moving towards going strictly with like M.2s, but they do give you a couple to work with here if you want to have larger, larger type storage or what have you, mechanical or SSD anyway. Very well built board. It's heavy. It's very heavy. So we're going to go ahead and get this processor here installed and we're going to test it out outside of the case because I want to make sure nothing is DOA. So I'm going to go ahead and get that process started now. So let's open up this beautiful processor. Ah, wow. Ryzen 9 9950X3D. Oh, we have just crack that seal and there we go so of course one of the very first things that i do when i get a new motherboard no matter what type it is I always want to check and triple check to make sure that there are no bent pins and it certainly does not look like it's the case with this particular one right here so obviously i am looking at the arrow the arrow Oops. all right that baby is in there I just and that's it processor is installed That looks correct. Okay, let's get the little heat sink we're going to put on here for testing and we'll go from there. All right, so RAM installed. And before you guys say anything, this is a smaller Be Quiet air cooler. This is the Slim Be Quiet, not intended for use with a TDP that this processor has. We are only wanting this to post. That's all I want to see is a post and have a quick glance at the BIOS. Then we're going to shut it down before anything gets too hot or what have you. This is just to make sure that nothing is DOA. So that's how we're going to work that. I'm going to go ahead and install my drive now into my main slot, my M.2 slot here. So let's do that. All right, there we go. Perfect, perfect. Now we're going to install our Gen 4 drive. Going in. Ah, I love that easy snap on these newer boards. It's a nice improvement. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and remove the plastic from the heat shield here and we'll get this mounted back all right i've got everything plugged in ready to go i have checked i have double checked triple checked quadruple checked that i have this video card 12 volt cable plugged in all the way clicked it in 
no gaps between the cable and the card connector. I also made the same sure thing with the 24 pin. I've also done the same thing with these two CPU power plugs that I have here. I usually only do one, but with this particular chip and board, I feel better knowing that I have both plugged in and I am going to stick with that. I have got the power connector plugged in to my power supply. Haven't kicked that on yet. HDMI, in this case, for my little small monitor. This is for testing purposes only. Got everything else plugged in, ready to go. We are going to give this a nice test here. I'm going to go ahead and flip the power switch on the power supply. And now we have power to the board. I do get a little bit of a glowing LED here, changing colors. Pretty cool. No other lights or anything on this board, which is fine with me. I'm not out for RGB really for this. Okay, all right, for the first time, we're gonna fire this guy up. Hope for the best. We have power. We have some lights going on over here, some, some uh, check engine lights. Just sitting there for now. Oh, it's changing to red. It all went away. These are my code lights. We got a white light now. That's a good sign. Got a green and white. And we have a post. And now we are in the BIOS. I do see it sees both the drives we got installed there. Very good. It sees our memory. Okay, F1 to run setup. It sees our Excellent, 64 gigs of RAM. This is looking really good. This is looking really good. F1, F1, there's our BIOS. So now we know the CPU is at in the 50s. That's okay, that's safe. It's not gonna overheat. I'm not gonna push it, that's for sure. So just having a quick look around, it looks like everything's being seen okay. We've got a BIOS version here. Keep an eye on that. I'm gonna definitely keep a uh, I'm going to make note of that actually, but uh, we're definitely going to keep an eye on BIOS updates for sure. I probably will be doing some, some BIOS updating as they come out after we confirm they're stable. So listen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a case, maybe do a quick little video on that. Nothing much there. I know there's so many build videos out here. I just want to share, just wanted to share with you guys, uh, my initial out of the box boot of this pro this is actually my PC that I'm building here. So uh, everything was kind of new at the time of this video, of course. So I just wanted to share and let you guys know what we what my results were as far as you know getting uh, making sure all my components appear to be in good shape. We're going to move along with the build. It's going to be a real quick build. I'm not going to go into detail with it. And we'll run a few benchmarks and see what it looks like. See what the final outcome is. I'm Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. See you soon.